Welcome to Sutishai Life English. My guest today, Kun Aitim Kun Parit Vachalasin, spokesman for the Move Forward Party, one of those whom we see almost every day talking about movements in parliament and politics in general. He is one of the leading figures in figuring out what's the next step for Move Forward Party. And of course, with all the turmoil surrounding Thai political circles at the moment, uh, Parit will be one of those people who can give us some enlightenment, enlightenment over the confusion. Thank you. And good morning, good afternoon to all viewers. Yes. What keeps you awake these days at night? <laughs> many, I mean, I'm sure many uh, issues keep you awake at night. <laughs> I think I think the main thing that keeps me awake um, ever since I've you know started working full time in politics yeah. is the problems that the Thai people are facing. I mean, that's what should be keeping every MP, <laughs> every politician awake every night. But that's too uh, many. So essentially, that's too many because there's so many problems. How can you sleep at all if you <laughs> if you are worried about all the problems facing Thailand as a politician too. Mm -hmm. That is true that there are many problems that need fixing, but it's a good thing that we have 150 of us <laughs> uh, to <laughs> distribute the workload um, um, amongst um, ourselves. But that's basically what's been um, keeping uh, Move Forward Party MPs um, up every night. Mm -hmm. I know people, you know, outside the party uh, may, you know, talk about um, party dissolution and, yeah. and the risks of it. Yeah. Um, that 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 may be happening mm -hmm. uh, over the next few months, but I think uh, what Move Forward Party MPs are fully concentrated on mm -hmm. is um, driving the changes that we want to see in this country and ensuring that even though we are not in government, mm -hmm. as the main opposition party, we will try whatever we whatever way we can, whatever mm -hmm. mechanic we have, mm -hmm. whether in parliament or outside parliament, to to drive those changes. Mm -hmm. What are the say three main challenges you are facing every day now your roadmap from now until the parliament reopening of course you know people following political news in thailand would ask you about possible dissolution of your party in the near future perhaps in the next few weeks at the same time you are driving issues of constitutional amendment or rewriting the constitution and at the same time you have local elections and the upcoming i don't know whether you call it election or selection of the new members of the senate how do you prioritize all these major issues at the moment yeah so i think what we are trying to do um during the next two or three months mm -hmm. um where parliament session has closed and will reopen um, at the beginning of July mm -hmm. are five key areas mm -hmm. uh, that we want to to use as our I guess working area mm -hmm. uh, to to drive uh, the changes that we have promised to the people yes. the first one is the the parliament and using parliamentary mechanics so even though that even though the parliament session has ended and will not reopen until the be beginning of July that doesn't mean that our work um, in parliament or related to parliament has stopped mm -hmm. Actually, during this interim um, break period, mm -hmm. what we are trying to do is to prepare new drafts mm -hmm. of uh, different laws that we want to propose mm -hmm. and initiate to Parliament when it reopens. Mm -hmm. So over the past year, uh, we have already submitted about 50, uh, p um, 50 bills or 50 draft bills that cover you know, areas um, ranging from politics to economics to environment to, to social issues. Um, and we have about 10 or 20 more draft bills um, that we want to propose mm. that we have in our pockets <laughs> yes. um, that are um, being finalized in order to right. present to parliament. So we'll get that kind of over the line over the next two or three months, mm. as well as the work that the standing committees are doing mm. uh, that will continue uh, even during this uh, parliamentary session um, break, mm. um, especially the committees which is being chaired by an MP from Move Forward Party. Yes. So that's one area. Mm. Uh, the second area i think is you know it's a good time for us to um to i guess spend time with people in different constituencies mm. especially the 
100 plus constituencies where we have a local MP, yes. um, this will be a good time for them to spend, you know, seven days a week with that with the people in that area, understand their problems and ensure that, you know, we have done our homework uh, as much as possible to prepare to solve those problems mm -hmm. when Parliament reopens mm -hmm. by the next time round. So I think hopefully um, if we do it right, mm -hmm. um, wherever you're listening um, from in Thailand, you will see local MPs knocking on your doors um, over the next uh, two or three months. Um, so that's the second area. The third area is on the issue-based, um, I guess, issue-based um, special teams that we have set up. Mm -hmm. So we've divided our 150 MPs into 15 different interest groups mm -hmm. or issue groups. Mm -hmm. So one group is focused on education, one group is focused on the environment, mm -hmm. one group is focused on decentralization, for example. Mm -hmm. So these groups will be uh, spending their time during this break to basically expand their network mm -hmm. and to you know talk to the experts talk to stakeholders to formulate more concrete policy proposals that we would present to the government mm -hmm. uh, when parliament reopens mm -hmm. the fourth area as you mentioned are the local governments mm -hmm. so move forward party announced at the end of last year that we will be contesting in local elections mm -hmm. the first series of which is the election for the in Thai we call it Nayok Abajor, which is basically kind of the 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 main elected executive of different uh, provinces. Yes. So we have opened up applications for 16 of the 77 provinces. Yes. We have now um, launched or announced um, our candidate for three of the provinces. Mm -hmm. uh, we are hoping to announce more in, a, in the upcoming few weeks, mm -hmm. and we will help them you know, prepare um, policy proposals, prepare their campaigns mm -hmm. um, over the next uh, few months. And the election will likely happen mm -hmm. uh, towards the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Mm -hmm. And then the, fi the fifth and final uh, area that we want to focus on is growing our party. Mm -hmm. So in the last week where we had our annual General Assembly meeting, we decided to, um, or we had a resolution to amend our um, party regulations. Mm -hmm to ensure that, or to increase the convenience of people in applying to become a party member. Yeah. So in the past, you had to have so many different documents, right? So you have to have like a housing register in order to be able to apply for party membership, which means that if I go on the streets and, you know, mm -hmm. convince someone to apply to become a party member, yeah. I cannot close the deal then, then because no one is going to be carrying around their no. housing registration no, right. form right. with them. But now we've um, adjusted our party regulations to be in line with the new regulations set out by the Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. which means that with just your national ID, you can apply for, for a party member. And we're hoping that that will be uh, an important factor for increasing our party membership yeah. from where it is today, which is close to 100,000, mm -hmm. to, 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 to accelerate even further. So those are the five key areas yeah. that we will be spending our time on over the next two or three months to make sure that we mm -hmm. you know use every minute, um, even though during during um, parliament um, every minute even though parliament is closed um, um, as to be as valuable as possible you say that the number of members of move forward parties now about hundred thousand what's the target in the next few months um the target um is I think we haven't set out a clear mm -hmm. number yet yeah so we set out um the, la the latest target we had was 100,000 by the beginning of this year, right. which we missed out slightly, but we are now um, almost close the gap. Mm -hmm. uh, it's hard to predict, but we are hoping to increase it as, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, what we also um, looking into or setting out a target is not just the total number of members, no. but there are two other uh, KPIs or indicators, which is important. Mm -hmm. uh, the first of which is the renewal rate, mm -hmm. because right now, if you're a party member, there are two types. Um, you're either a lifetime member yes. or you're an annual member. Mm -hmm. And most members right now are, are, are annual members. Mm -hmm. um, and so therefore, the, the important factor is the renewal rate. Right. So how many of those annual members renew their membership? Right. We've seen it from the two years ago to the last year. We managed to increase the renewal rate by about 3x mm -hmm. or three times. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping for that to, 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 to increase even further. Mm -hmm. The second uh, target, or, or rather the third, apart from the number of, total number of members and the renewal rate, uh, what we call in Thai, Tor Tan Pat Pajam Amper. Right. So if you imagine, so if you're listening from abroad, mm -hmm. Thailand is split up into 77 provinces. Mm -hmm. Each province is in, split up into what we call sub-province or Amper. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are about 800 to 1,000 Ampers mm -hmm. um, in, in Thailand. And, in that split, and, and basically what we're trying to do is to ensure that we have an elected representative from all oh. you know, 800 plus um, umpers or sub-provinces. Mm -hmm. And uh, the criteria we have laid out is that if any 
um, per Osa province has 100 move forward party members. Yes. They are entitled to hold a meeting mm. and select one representative uh -huh. to be, you know, that sub provinces move forward party representative. Mm. And so far we have now um, had those meetings and had those elections for 200 mm. um, of the sub provinces. So about 25% mm. of sub provinces around the country. Mm. So we're hoping to increase that even further. Uh, with about 100,000 members, are you the biggest party with the, in terms of number of members? What about per party or, or the Democrat Party, which is the oldest party in the country? I'm not sure. I don't want to claim without you know <laughs> statistics backing me up. But I think we are. If we're not the largest, we are. We are close to the largest right now. Mm -hmm. But I think to bear in mind that the the record um, that was held beforehand, yes. I think reached about a million, uh -huh. uh, if I'm not mistaken, because. Mm -hmm. Remember when the military, the latest military government came to power, mm -hmm. or led by General Priyut, mm -hmm. um, after the coup, what they did was they reset membership of parties, wow. which means that you know for parties that existed before um, the military coup, for example, Pertai mm -hmm. and Democrat Party, their membership basically was reduced to almost zero wow. um, because everything was reset unless you know um, you came and and reconfirm your status within a certain number of days, oh. which was a very short period. Yep. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I, I need to look up the statistics. What was the you know, highest ever recorded <laughs> number of members for, for yeah. a certain party? But hopefully we will, we, will, we will try and break that record sooner or later. I know, because that number is very interesting to see how you know, widespread or how... Uh, what kind of grassroots support that each party has? What about donations, public donations? Is the Move Forward Party also um, leading other parties? Well, I can confirm that we have broken the record. Yeah. Um, so to to lay out what we mean by donations, uh, there are many different types of donations. Yeah. One is you know general donations, yes. where people donate a certain amount of money to to the party, and of course, it's if you want to understand how a party works, mm -hmm. it's not a matter of just the number of, um, or the total amount of donations that has donated. No. But what's really important is the distribution of those donations. Yes. So let's say if you get a hundred million, right? Mm -hmm. If you get a hundred million from one person, mm -hmm. that tells a certain story. Right. If you get a hundred million from you know a million people each donating hundred baht each, yeah. that's a different story. Sure. So that's you know something we we have to look into regarding general donations. Mm -hmm. But the one where Move Forward Party has broken the record is on what we call donations related to, to the tax system. Tax. So right now, if a certain person were to pay income tax, mm -hmm. they have the right to divert 500 baht of their tax expenses mm -hmm. or of, of, of the tax that they have to pay mm -hmm. uh, to any to a certain political party instead. Right. And in that regard, in that pool mm -hmm. of tax-related donations, mm -hmm. we have broken the record. So over the past three years, we've grown that number every year. And I think the latest year was the highest ever recorded mm -hmm. ever since this kind of system was introduced. So that, I think, for us mm -hmm. um, speaks volumes. And we are, right now, if I'm not mistaken, more than half of our income comes from you know this certain mm -hmm. uh, mechanic and grassroots support. Mm -hmm. And the ideal situation is to increase that to 100%. Uh -huh. But right now, apart from our own internal efforts, mm -hmm. There are external factors that we need to deal with, mm. especially the organic law related to, to political parties. Yes. I give you two certain challenges. Okay. The first one right now, um, I already mentioned about how we broke the record on getting tax-related donations. Right. But we are not allowed to use that money freely. Uh -huh. So can, let's say we get 50 million baht from that, from yeah. that right. channel. Right. That 50 million baht, million baht is reserved for move forward parties, so it's not deducted. No. But in order to use that money to spend mm. it on certain activities, we have to write a proposal to the Electoral Commission uh -huh. two weeks in advance oh, yes. with all the details about what that activity entails. Yeah. And the Electoral Commission will have a list of activities which are permitted uh -huh. and a certain list which are not permitted. Uh -huh. And there are certain activities which we feel that political parties should be able to do. For example, conduct polls and conduct surveys. Yes. But the Electoral Commission deem that to be a certain type of activity that political parties should not engage in. Wow. So there are certain restrictions on that front uh -huh. um, about what we can do with the money and how flex flexible we can be in using that money. Uh -huh. The second challenge is right now the ability for parties to uh, sell merchandise uh -huh. or sell products uh -huh. online mm -hmm. 
is is not allowed. No. So we're not allowed to sell our merchandise online. We're only allowed to sell at you know party SQs and official branches. So right now the the online shops uh, in platforms are not are not defined as being uh -huh. um, official party branches. These are rules. So these restrictions are what we're trying yeah. to resolve. Uh, these are rules set by the election commission. It's not a law or anything. It's just, you know, the election commission uh, laying out or laying down these rules from their own viewpoint, uh, conducting polls or selling things online, you know, uh, popular things people do anyway. Why the restrictions on political parties? There are certain parts that are embedded in the law. And that will require an amendment to the law. And the law we're talking about here is actually not just a general law, yes. but an organic law right. related to the constitution. Mm -hmm. So in Thai, we call it Prashvayat Prakop Ratamanun. So in a sense, there are certain aspects of the law that need to be amended. Mm -hmm. But you're right that there are certain elements which actually can be solved by the electoral commission on their own. Uh -huh. I think an example that we have been demanding for, for a very long time and was only recently solved was the example I just gave about um, applying for party membership. In the past, the Electoral Commission used to have in their regulations that you need all these documents. Mm -hmm. And what was worse was that instead of just putting it in their own regulations, mm -hmm. they basically forced the party mm -hmm. to put these you know, regulations mm -hmm. in the party's own regulations as well. Mm -hmm. So when eventually the Electoral Commission listened and amended their regulations to allow for applying for party member without these documents, uh -huh. the party cannot adapt automatically. They have to wait for that general meeting to go and amend the regulations that the party had laid out on, on the suggestion of the electoral commission to be in line with a new version. So oh, no, that's no, an no, example no. of the, the, the friction that we've seen in these changes. Yes. But what we are trying to do, um, not we as Pooh Forward Party actually, but we as the, the House of Representatives Committee mm -hmm. on Political Development, mm -hmm. we've set up a subcommittee that is responsible for drafting mm -hmm. a new organic law or rather amendments to the existing organic law that will help solve all these issues mm -hmm. and allow all political parties to be able to develop into mm -hmm. political institutions mm -hmm. and be more free in terms of how they conduct their activities. Mm -hmm. And what we've done, I mean, the committee at the beginning is mm -hmm. a multi-party committee, mm -hmm. but what we've also done and what the, the chair of this subcommittee has done mm -hmm. is gone around and talk to different parties mm -hmm. and get their viewpoints and get their recommendations to ensure that we can push this ahead as a bipartisan effort mm -hmm. um, across all parties. Because at the end of the day, it's the benefit of all parties. It's the benefit of democracy as a whole. It's not to the benefit of any one a single political party. And we've gotten good responses. Mm -hmm. We visited Per Thai Party. We visited the Democrat Party. Mm -hmm. We have plans to visit Pum Jai Thai Party. Yes. It was recently postponed because they had a new election and a new uh, committee, um, a new committee, yeah. a new committee, yeah. a new set of committee members. Yeah. But we are hoping we are hoping to meet them soon, uh, and then we can get this bipartisan bill mm -hmm. proposed to Parliament as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. I know you don't enjoy talking about the possible dissolution of your party, but your <laughs> party leader and your the chief advisor Kun Pitha and Kun Chaitawat have been trying to convince the public that it's not a good idea to dissolve political parties because it's not democratic and it's not fair. In fact, uh, Kun Pitha said in past few days that if the party is dissolved, the impact may be in reverse to what those who won the party reserve uh, wanted to see. That is, it could strengthen the move forward party instead of weakening it. So there's no point in doing that. Kun Chai Thawad, the party leader, says that we are going to move on. It's not the party that is the issue. It's the spirit. It's the principle. It's the platform. It's the ideology. What personally do you think will be the impact if and when the party is dissolved, what will you, the Thai society in general get? And what, as a rising politician, do you think your role will be in that scenario? 
Yeah, so there are a lot of elements to unpack. Let me unpack it into three key issues. Okay. The first issue, I noticed you used the word if and when, <laughs> if and I want to <laughs> rebut that a little bit. All right. Um, the first message and the first issue that I want to, to communicate is I don't want the public to think that it's a foregone conclusion okay. Okay. that the party will be dissolved. Mm -hmm. In spite of what the constitutional court said regarding the verdict mm -hmm. that came out in January, mm -hmm. It's a different issue mm -hmm. um, in terms of whether that verdict will lead to the dissolution of the party or not. Yes. Because we're looking at different sections of the constitution and different grounds mm -hmm. for punishing as well, as well as different types of penalties being used. So the first message that I want to communicate to the public, both in Thailand and abroad, mm -hmm. is it's not a foregone conclusion that the party will be dissolved. Mm -hmm. I know we are fighting against all odds. Yeah. I know I'm not naive, uh, yes. but I want to ensure that we do not see it as a foregone conclusion. Okay. That's number one. Okay. Uh, the second point is whatever were to happen, whether the party will get dissolved or not, mm. I believe that the party's growth mm. will not depend or be dependent on mm -hmm. what happens with the dissolution result. Mm -hmm. In a sense, you know, regardless of whether the party is dissolved or not, the party will grow fast, or so slowly based on how well we can um, maintain and increase the standards of work that we're doing both in and outside parliament. Mm. And that's what I truly believe in. I don't think the dissolution will, will uh, damage our growth potential. Mm. I'm not sure that it will accelerate it either. Mm. And we definitely don't want to use that as a tool to accelerating our <laughs> potential and our growth. We want to grow mm. because we are able to uh, convince the people that our vision of what we want to see in Thailand is the vision that will be beneficial mm -hmm. for everyone. Mm -hmm. And we want to be able to grow mm -hmm. um, based on the fact that we can convince the people that we are the right people to go and manage this country and, mm -hmm. and make that vision come true. Mm -hmm. So that's the second, second, second point. Yes. And the third and final and potentially most important point mm -hmm. is we've always reiterated that we do not agree with the use of party dissolutions ah. that have been used in Thailand in the past mm -hmm. to basically uh, weaken mm -hmm. uh, parties that are potentially in opposition to the established institutions at the time. Mm -hmm. And I think there are two sub-elements that are important in this point. Mm -hmm. The first sub-element is that right now, the criteria for party dissolution in Thailand, mm -hmm. which is actually in the organic law that we just talked about on political parties, mm -hmm. is not in line with global democratic standards. If we talk about global democratic standards, if let's say a committee, um, an executive committee of a party or a party leader or a party sec um, secretary general were to do something that was wrong, mm -hmm. the punishment would fall on those people. Oh, it would not okay. lead to the dissolution of the institution right. or the party as an institution right. because the party as a political institution is seen as being mm -hmm. above and beyond mm -hmm. uh, any one particular person or any uh, particular set of committee members. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, when we talk about party dissolution, we need to understand this fact first, that in Thailand, the law is not in line mm -hmm. with global democratic standards. Mm -hmm. And that's why if we look at a parallel case that's happening right now, but much less talked about, mm -hmm. which is the potential dissolution of Pum Jai Thai party Pum Jai Thai, yes, um, yes. due to the, the, the misbehavior of their previous secretary general. Right. Even though we were the one that exposed this mm -hmm. through the no confidence debate in parliament, right. we don't. We never ever suggested that the, the solution to all this or the penalty for this should be party dissolution. Mm -hmm. We think you know we should punishment. We should punish the person who did who uh, had or conducted um, the, the wrong um, behavior or, or violated a certain law. Right. But the the penalty should not be the dissolution of Pum Sai Thai Party, oh, and we've been very clear on that. So that that's the first sub-element that's important. Mm. The second sub-element is we need to draw this back to the 2017 constitution. Mm -hmm. Right now, the organizations or the institutions that are involved with party dissolution mm -hmm. are the Electoral Commission mm -hmm. and the Constitutional Court. Yes. And we need to think a little bit about how does this country select people to be on the Electoral Commission members, yep. committee members, and the Constitutional Court justices. Mm -hmm. And the answer is that to be on these committee members or to be a constitutional court justice, you have to be verified by the 250 senators, yeah, yeah. Who, of whom you know, almost all were directly or indirectly appointed by the military government, yeah, yeah. who is now one of the key players mm -hmm. in parliamentary politics. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, people have the right to question mm -hmm. the impartiality and the neutral nature mm -hmm. of these 
um, organizations in this current setup. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think we have been vocally, um, we have vocally come out to say why we disagree mm -hmm. with um, the use of party dissolution as a method to weaken mm -hmm. the opposition. Mm -hmm. right? And I think that is both because the current law is not in line with democratic standards, as well mm -hmm. as the fact that the people involved with this decision mm -hmm have all been appointed by people affiliated with one side of the political spectrum and not the appointments process that we want to see happen, which can ensure that you get people who are uh, appointed from a wide variety of background, or at least mm -hmm. people can be confident in terms of that in, in, impartiality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What then will happen? I mean, you don't want to see it happen. It's not a foregone conclusion, but, you know, for some reason, most Thai people think that that is the fate you're going to face. Some people suggest that you will be the leader of the third generation of the movement, if you don't want to call it parties, that you'll be leading the next generation of the new party, whatever it's going to be called. Are you ready for that role? You're too young? You're not even qualified to run as a member of the new Senate. <laughs> You're not 40 yet. Are you ready for the new challenge, if that should come to pass? Firstly, to dispel all the rumors, <laughs> I want to reiterate that there has not been a conversation at all within the party about you know what the new leadership structure who will fill what position if there were to be a new party. No, so to, to dispel no, no, that rumor straight even, away, that there has never even, been a conversation no, not even um, on this. And I think mm -hmm. I think the main reason that there has not been a conversation on this at all mm -hmm. is because we all believe that the party is bigger than the person. Okay. So in a sense, you know, the party as a whole mm -hmm. has a lot of capable people who I'm sure mm -hmm. will, will be able to uh, do the tasks that are assigned to them. Mm -hmm. But that conversation has not happened yet because mm -hmm. we feel that what's more important instead of talking and discussing specific persons mm -hmm. is the movement as a whole and the party as a whole. Mm -hmm. So I think to dispel rumors straight away on that front. <laughs> but to your other question about yeah. what will happen yes. if the dissolution were to 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 happen yes. as people had predicted, yes. I think we can learn from recent history uh -huh. and we can use history to predict the future. Okay. And we've seen <laughs> what happened when Future Forward was dissolved. Yes. Of course, the party lost key personnel that are very valuable to parliamentary politics. Yes. Even though now they are trying to push through the changes outside parliament, mm -hmm. but I think it's worth pointing out that mm -hmm. the parliament parliamentary politics lost a lot of key personnel that could really contribute a lot. Mm -hmm. um, but for the party, you can see that the transition from future forward to move forward party mm -hmm. has not reduced the support that this movement has been able to to gather mm -hmm. so i think this time round if it were to happen mm -hmm. i see it going in the in a similar uh direction mm -hmm. in the sense that of course the the personnel may have to change mm -hmm. uh, the vehicle may have to change mm -hmm. but the ideologies and the principles behind what we are pushing for mm -hmm. will continue mm -hmm. and there will be some sort of new mm -hmm. vehicle that will push these ideas ahead in parliament. Mm -hmm. You said that there has never been any mention of the possibility of this, what I would call the worst case scenario that might put you in the seat of the leader of the next generation of leaders. The top leadership might have considered this without consulting you. Is that possible? So to be clear, <laughs> what I said was there has not been a conversation on the, the personnel. Okay. But I'm sure there has been conversation on contingency plans uh -huh. in terms of what the movement as a whole would push ahead if the party were dissolved. Right. So a, a different issue. There has not been a conversation on the personnel, mm -hmm. but I'm, there has been a con conversation, and I've reiterated on many occasions that we, of course, have backup plans for all scenarios, oh. one of which is, of course, if the dissolution were to, to, to go through. Mm -hmm. Some you have to ask the top leadership then to, to, to <laughs> answer your question. But I think I can speak for the party that there has not been a, a conversation on, on, on personnel. Because they went through uh, the crisis uh, before, you see. They were with the Anakot Mai, the new future party before. But you were not 
with the party when it was dissolved, right? When Anakutmai was dissolved. No, I was not. Yeah. I was starting to do certain projects with yeah. the the yeah. Future Forward and Progressive Movement and Move Forward Party Movement as a whole on the Constitution, but I was was not in the party when it happened. Mm -hmm. Some critics have suggested that if the party is broken up, of many, uh, we know one knows the number, would defect to other parties. They might break away from whatever new party that you might form. Do you have that suspicion? Well, I imagine that criticism um, would come from looking at the past and seeing that when Future Forward Party was so, this so yeah. even though the movement as a whole mm -hmm. uh, gathered more and more support, there were certain MPs that defected mm -hmm. and did not join Move Forward Party. Right. So I understand where that criticism or that skepticism is coming from. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think this time around, I am confident that we will move ahead in a united manner mm -hmm. um, for two reasons. Mm -hmm. The first one is I believe that everyone that walked into the party and submitted that application form to apply for MP mm -hmm. have the same goals in mind, have the same dreams in mind, have the same ideologies in mind mm -hmm. in terms of what we want to see for the future of, of Thailand. Mm -hmm. And we have had a much lengthier mm -hmm. vetting process mm -hmm. in terms of the party's election mechanism mm -hmm. for, for evaluating and eventually selecting mm -hmm. the candidates for MPs. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I believe that this, this time round, with that lengthier process, mm -hmm. uh, every MP or every candidate who applied to become mm -hmm. or to run an election to become an MP mm -hmm. have the same ideologies when they walked into the party HQ and submitted that application form. Mm -hmm. But the second reason is I also think that this time round, um, people who applied for um, or applied to run for Move Forward Party MP mm -hmm. know the legal challenges that lie ahead. Uh -huh. I mean, you can forgive people who apply for future forward party MPs to not be aware of the legal challenges that eventually happen. Yes. Right? yes. But I think for people who walk into and apply for to become move forward party MP, I think they, they must know <laughs> the legal risks yes. that could be involved with this. Uh, so in that sense, that's why I believe that mm -hmm. the people who are now uh, currently the 150 MPs mm -hmm. will have the same ideology the day they walk into the party SQ mm -hmm. and they have the same awareness of the legal challenges that that may mm. that may happen so that's why i speak with um mm. relative confidence mm. that the 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 movement and the mps will move ahead in, in a united manner kun thaksin chinawat said the poor thai party is not the new conservative or neo conservative party how would you describe move forward party's ideology I think we see ourselves as a progressive party, uh, and I think that's not just that's not just and that's not just you know words spoken by myself, mm -hmm. but I think it's backed up by the fact that we are also mm -hmm. um, a member mm -hmm. of um, Sok Dem mm -hmm. Asia, which is uh, an alliance mm -hmm. of center left, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. social democratic and progressive parties mm -hmm. in the region, mm -hmm. and I, we are also working with the Progressive Alliance Network, which is the global yes. network of um, center-left, mm -hmm. social democratic, and progressive um, parties mm -hmm. um, across the world. Mm -hmm. So I think we're very clear in terms of our identity. Mm -hmm. And you know that means that what we are pushing ahead, things like democratization, things like decentralization, mm -hmm. things like ensuring um, focus and prioritization on human rights issues, mm -hmm. uh, things like pushing ahead for a competitive and inclusive mm -hmm. um, economy. Mm -hmm. I think that that is very consistent with progressive values and social democratic values that we see mm -hmm. um, amongst similar parties mm -hmm. across the world. Do you think that the party will tone down its position on trying to amend the less majesty law from now on? I believe whatever the party used to see as a problem in this country, and it has not been fixed, we still see it as a problem. Mm -hmm. Of course, the new factor that's come in is the constitutional court verdict, which means that the solution space for solving this problem has unfortunately been slightly more limited mm -hmm. than beforehand. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it's as limited or as restrictive mm -hmm. as certain analysts mm -hmm. have made it out to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain analysis mm -hmm. that came out after the, the verdict yeah. that you know talks about amending 112 is no longer allowed at all. 
Right. I don't think that's the case. I mean, I read the verdict mm -hmm. over and over again. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are certain restrictions to the solution space, which we disagree with. Mm -hmm. But even if we were to take that restriction on board, mm -hmm. there is still part of the solution space that can be mm -hmm. used to solve the problems regarding 112 that mm -hmm. we believe should be solved. Mm -hmm. For example, let's say if we were to amend the law to um, reduce the penalty, yes. which is currently three to 15 years in prison. Right. I don't think that's something which is disallowed by the verdict. Mm -hmm. If we were to talk about separating the law, mm -hmm. right now it's one section that covers both defamation, insults and threats. Mm -hmm. And people see that you know those three words carry a uh, different meaning. Mm -hmm. There are certain proposals to split up that section mm -hmm. and basically break the law into two or three mm -hmm. with different penalties for different types of wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. That's something is I don't think it's disallowed by the verdict. Mm -hmm. Or even if we were talk to, um, to talk about uh, solving the issue about who should have the right to s initiate a complaints process mm -hmm. regarding 112, mm -hmm. which is currently kind of open to anyone mm -hmm. and everyone. Mm -hmm. I don't think that that talk is disallowed mm -hmm. either. Mm -hmm. um, because yes, they mentioned that giving that right to the monarch is something that they, the constitutional court deemed to be unconstitutional. Right. But the verdict didn't say that we cannot talk about giving that right to another certain mm -hmm. uh, representative or a certain mm -hmm. uh, political office mm -hmm. instead. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, for me, to come back to your question, mm -hmm. what we saw as a problem last year, we still see as a problem this year. Mm -hmm. And I believe that there are still mm -hmm. certain elements of the solution space that can be used to fix this problem in mm -hmm. spite of the restrictions mm -hmm. that are laid out by the Constitutional Court verdict. Mm -hmm. The election commission in filing the request to the constitutional court to dissolve move forward party basically the allegation is that the move forward party has been trying to overthrow the government the thai legal term is lom lang kan pokrong now the constitutional court has asked the move forward party to give its rebuttal in 15 days how would you rebut if you were to stand in front of the constitutional court? How would you say that the election commission was wrong? What is your hmm. rebuttal? So the full rebuttal um, is currently being drafted by the legal team mm. in conjunction with the executive committee members. Yes. So I don't want to disclose the whole detail I know, but because, in, in because I'm worried language. that if, if it if I understand it slightly differently, <laughs> then it uh, may be uh, contradictory statements all right. that we make to the constitutional court. But I think what we as a party mm -hmm. had promised and I can announce in this show, mm -hmm. yes. in this interview, mm -hmm. is that once we submit that rebuttal mm -hmm. formally to the constitutional court, we will hold a press conference okay. to go into detail mm -hmm. in terms of the the narrative and the lines of argument that we will use mm -hmm. to rebut that statement. Mm -hmm. So please stay tuned. And I think that will happen sometime after the Thai New Year, so after the Songkran holidays. Mm -hmm. But what I can mm -hmm. share right now are certain food for thought okay. that I'm sure will be um, carefully drafted into a rebuttal. Right. Uh, the first one is we have to understand that the verdict that came out in January, mm -hmm. in a way, acted as uh, an announcement in terms of what types of behavior is deemed unconstitutional mm -hmm. and what is not deemed unconstitutional. Uh -huh. It's almost set a new standard mm -hmm. on what to see as being mm -hmm. behavior that, that, that is allowed by the constitu Constitution and what is not allowed. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, given that this is a new standard that's come out in January, mm -hmm. of course you can announce that new standard and ask for everyone to stop what they were doing mm -hmm. that violated that new standard mm -hmm. and say that, you know, go ahead, please stick to this new standard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what should not be the case is to use the new, this new standard to punish retrospectively uh -huh. the actions that were done before this new standard came out. Mm -hmm. Because some people may have done something that in the end violated this new standard, but at the time they did not know that it violated the standard because there was no standard that came out or at least there were different understanding mm -hmm. of what the standard uh, in what what the standard should be mm -hmm. right so in that that's one argument that i think to 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 uh, the general public i think it's quite easy to understand mm -hmm. what we are trying to 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 communicate mm -hmm. the second one is the proportionality of the punishment mm -hmm. 
because the verdict that came out in January was related to Section 1449 of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. So it says that if there is any behavior that is constituted constituted as being overthrowing the the regime, mm -hmm. the the penalty is for them to stop doing it. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, it's not it, the the penalty is just to stop doing what you're doing. Uh -huh. But what we're talking about here this time round is a penalty related to Section 92 of the Organic Law and Political Parties, which mm -hmm. carry the dissolution of the party, mm -hmm. as well as revoking the right of the executive committee members to mm -hmm. stand for election, mm -hmm. at least for, for a certain number of years. Mm -hmm. So in essence, it's a much harsher penalty. Yeah. So if you're going to impose a harsher penalty, it needs to be proportionate to the wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, mm -hmm. you know, even if the Electoral Commission and the Constitutional Court still see mm -hmm. what we have done to be something in violation mm -hmm. of... Um, of the organic law and political parties, mm -hmm. you know whether that is enough or sufficient to punish mm -hmm. um, our party with the solution. I think it's still in in the in something that that remains to be questioned. Mm -hmm. So those are two two preliminary ideas mm -hmm. that I think is something which um, you don't need to be an expert in law to 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 understand. And I think that will be part of our rebuttal as well. Well, the verdict from the Constitutional Court could come quite soon, in the next few weeks, perhaps. Uh, what? So, I mean, right. it cannot come sooner than 15 days, so that, that's the minimum. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, we also have the right to extend that deadline. Okay. And I think we will use that right, mm. because we the the accusation mm. um, statement, mm. I think it's over 100 pages. Oh, yeah. So it's quite a detailed set of documents, so we need to process it and... and, and, and and present our rebuttal in detail. Mm. So we will try and apply for an extension. Mm. Whether we get that remains to be seen. Right. Um, and then after that, we will also um, demand a right for there to be an, a further investigation. Mm. In Thai, we all call it Tai Suan, Suan. Um, which we feel that you know is something that should be should be in place. Mm. But that is down to the constitutional court on whether they they will mm. allow for a further investigation or whether they will deem our rebuttal and the initial accusation to be sufficient evidence to come to a verdict. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. no sooner than 15 days. <laughs> no sooner. No um, sooner but I think days. it could it could be um, in practice uh, um, a bit longer than that. Well, definitely you can enjoy Songkran meantime, meantime right? <laughs> I'm not sure enjoy. I'm not sure enjoy is the right word <laughs> with this uh, risk looming. But I think we will. Uh -huh. But during Songkran, what we will do is actually uh, mainly. Um, Go around the country. Ah. Um, I mean, our MPs will split up into different groups, okay. and we will use this occasion uh -huh. um, during the Thai New Year to talk to as many people oh. uh, as possible. Mm. So there may be a group of us going to the northeastern provinces. All right. There may be a group of us going to the north. Uh -huh. um, but the group that's going to the north will have to monitor the situation first yeah. because if the uh, air pollution yeah. uh, is not great, then of course that's probably not a good environment for mm. for any outdoor activities. So the focus will be more on about mm. how can we um, present um, proposals or, or, or help the government in trying to solve this issue. Mm -hmm. You have taken up a lot of challenges. What, what do you do to relax these days yourself? For me? Yep. Um, Again, I'm not sure relax is the right word, but <laughs> distract maybe is football. I mean, I'm a big, I'm a big football fan and I'm a, I'm a Liverpool FC supporter. So you can imagine my uh, current emotions of disappointment after we drew with Man United over the weekend. So that's why I say I'm not sure relax is the right word, but yes, it does bring me, it does bring me entertainment and it makes me think less about politics for those 90 minutes in the football <laughs> matches play. I'm not, depending on the result and the performance, I'm not sure relax is always the right word. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, you know, bad news uh, cannot come forever. So there is um, hope at the end of the tunnel or maybe, you know, there might be some good news in politics, some bad news in sports, but then altogether, you think you will survive, right? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, actually, if we try to draw a certain story from Liverpool, yes. um, this season, uh -huh. we have seen that Liverpool as a football club is a team, okay. in the, at least in the English Premier League, out of 20 teams, right. is a team that scored um, the most number of goals right. from the 76th minute onwards. Yes. So es essentially, the last part of the game, right. we scored the most number of goals right. compared to other teams, right. and by quite a long margin. Right. So that, that never say that attitude, <laughs> that you know spirit of fighting until the end. 
is exactly what we need right now at Move Forward Party okay. during these, you know, okay. potential few weeks or a um, few months before the, the dissolution verdict comes out. Okay. Never say die for Move Forward Party. Thank you very much, Kun Parit. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kun Sri